The UK and Mauritius reached an agreement whereby London would transfer sovereignty of the Chagos Islands to Mauritius but retain control for 99 years over military facilities on Diego Garcia Island. The announcement was welcomed by the US, which holds several military facilities on Diego Garcia. The transfer of sovereignty will need a vote in the House of Commons to become effective as it's a legal treaty. Once implemented, the agreement will provide long-term certainty over the operations of US military facilities on Diego Garcia, which play a critical role role in US security architecture in the Indo-Pacific. However, the agreement is not clear on the extent to which Mauritius will have a say regarding the renewal of the US lease on Diego Garcia, which expires in 2036. The UK controlled the region since 1814 and detached the Chagos Islands in 1965 from Mauritius to create the British Indian Ocean Territory. In the early 1970s, the UK evicted about 1,500 residents to Mauritius and the Seychelles to make way for an airbase on the large island Diego Garcia which was leased to the US for a 50-year lease which was then renewed for a further 20 years in 2016. The International Court of Justice ruled in 2019 that Britain's separation of the Chagos Islands from Mauritius was unlawful and London faced growing international pressure to return the islands to Mauritius including from other Commonwealth countries. The Israel Defense Forces has said it is preparing to launch a serious and significant strike against Iran in response to an Iranian missile barrage. Israel is widely expected to focus its retaliatory strikes on a small number of targets inside Iran, but there's a chance it will pursue more escalatory options that may invite further Iranian strikes. Israel may target Iranian nuclear or oil and gas infrastructure. However, the US has advised Israel against these measures. US President Joe Biden said that he would oppose targeting Tehran's nuclear facilities, it is unclear whether the Israelis will heed Biden's warning. Israel has already conducted two major operations in Lebanon, sabotaging thousands of Hezbollah communication devices and then killing Hassan Nasrallah in an airstrike without consulting Washington first. Prior to the Nasrallah operation, Netanyahu agreed to a ceasefire proposal drawn up by the US and France before backing out at the last moment and going ahead with the airstrike. With Israel making clear it will respond, it's lost the element of surprise as Iran is expecting an attack. But with the Gaza war now having spread beyond Palestine, we may be seeing the beginning of a region-wide war. Moscow will remove the Taliban from the list of terrorist organizations Russia's presidential envoy to Afghanistan told journalists. The change was also confirmed by the head of the Federal Security Service, which is responsible for combating terrorist threats. This is a major reversal of fortune as the Taliban had long seen Russia as the enemy who invaded the country back in the 1980s. But since the death of Mullah Omar, subsequent leaders wanted to diversify their relations and reduce their dependency on Pakistan. The Taliban reached out to Moscow and since 2015 extensive visits took place by the Taliban who regularly visited Moscow. The Taliban since coming to power in 2021 has been keen to develop relations with all the nations it shares borders with and with the global powers. Despite the peace deal with the US, America has maintained sanctions on the country and effectively seized the country's central bank reserves which will be used to pay US victims of terrorism. Overnight, the Afghan Central Bank reserves went from belonging to the Afghan people to being the transferable property of the United States.